What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. This is a sneak peek video of one of the lessons covered in my DA100 Power BI exam preparation course that's hosted over on training.bielite.com. The link will be down in the description. The course covers 100 lessons and this is one of those lessons on role-playing dimensions versus use relationship. I hope you enjoy this sneak peek of the course. If you do, consider enrolling. There's a ton of information over on that DA100 course. In this topic, we're gonna to talk about role-playing dimensions. Before we do, I'm gonna go ahead and delete our table from the previous lesson because we don't need that example in our file moving forward. There we go. And a role-playing dimension is basically a table that can be used as a dimension table, but we're going to duplicate it multiple times in order to bring out insights on multiple different columns. So for example, if we go to our modeling view, we see that our sales orders table has an order date. It also has an expected delivery date. If we want to get extended information on each of these dates, for example, if one of the records for expected delivery date was let's say January 1st, 2014, if we wanted to get information on what day of the week that was, what month of the year that was, we could do that with a date dimensional table. But if we also wanted to get that same information for order date, we'd have to duplicate that date table as well. So this is jumping forward a few steps because later on we're gonna be creating a date table ourselves. So let's go ahead and just create a nice and quick one. I'm going to come here and in our data view under table tools, I'm gonna to create a new table. So I'm just gonna create a table called date one. And I'm gonna set this equal to the calendar function. And I'm just going to do, um, I'm gonna provide it a minimum date of one, one, or sorry, uh, it's 2013, one, one, and a maximum date of our date function. Uh, let's do 2017, one, one, because that encompasses our entire data set. So let's go ahead and click okay. So this is our date table. Uh, we're gonna create one more column to provide a little bit more information about these dates. I'm going to create a month start date. So I'm gonna call this month start date. And this is simply going to be a uh, date function. We're gonna provide the year of our date column. We're gonna provide the month of our uh, date column. And then we're gonna provide one for the day. So this is always gonna be the first day of that month. And you can see that is true. For example, on January 9th, 2013, it is January 1st, 2013. So that looks nice. Next, if we want to use this date table, we would create a relationship between one of these dates to that new table. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring our date one table over here to the left, and I'm gonna create a relationship between order date and date. So now we're able to get month start date for order date, and we can do that by going to our report canvas, and I am going to drop month start date here into a line chart, and now it's in the axis. And in sales orders, I am going to just take order ID. So now we have our count of order ID based on that uh, month start date. So we see that each month start date has one point. So that's working perfectly. But keep in mind that this is working off of the order date. So it's not working off of the expected shipping date. If there's a difference in that order date and expected ship date, these numbers would vary across the month. And we can easily visualize that if we were to duplicate our date one table and create a second role playing dimension. So I'm gonna take the code that we wrote for date one and I'm going to create a new table. I'm gonna call this date two. So it's gonna have the same base and I'm gonna take our calculate column for month start date and add it on to our date two table. So new column, I'm gonna throw this in here, month start date, but instead of date one, we want to reference date two and instead of date one, let's reference date two again, click okay. So now we have our month start date for our date two table as well. And if we bring our date two table over to the left over here in the modeling view, let's create a relationship based on expected delivery date instead. So if we drop that on to date, we now have a relationship set up between the orders table to date one based on order date and a relationship to expected delivery date uh, to date two as well. So now we've set up our two role playing dimensions. We can create a very similar chart here and throw it over here. And we will use month start date from the date two table instead. 
and now we see that those graphs are very different. So we have a different count for the beginning of each month or for the entirety of each month because we're setting up the relationships on different columns. So this isn't necessarily a best practice. I wouldn't recommend having to duplicate these tables in order to get more information based on multiple fields. Instead, I'm actually going to get rid of our date two table and show you best practice in order to handle relationships that might need to be made from one table to another based on multiple columns. So instead, we now have our date one table and that should have made our second visualization break. If we want to come back to our modeling view, instead, since we already have our order date set up as the column, we can use expected delivery date and drag that onto date. And it's gonna tell us that it can't create both relationships out of the box. It's gonna make this second relationship inactive as you can see based on this dashed line. We can double click that and see that we cannot turn this active. It's gonna tell us that we can't do that because we already have a relationship set up to order date. So that's totally fine. So now if we come back to our report view and we get rid of our field here and we take our month start date and throw that in, it's gonna be the exact same because it's using our active relationship on sales order date. So instead we actually have to write a measure in order to use our inactive relationship. And I'm gonna create that measure directly on the date one table. I'm gonna call this count of orders delivery date. Set that equal to the calculate function and we'll get more into the calculate function later. So just bear with me. We are going to do the same count of order ID that we are doing directly in the visualization. Now we're gonna use the use relationship DAX function, which is going to take the two columns between the inactive relationship that we'd like to use instead of the active relationship. So if you remember, that's based on the date one date and the expected delivery date. Close that off and close off our calculate function. So now that we have that measure written, we can take that and throw that in the values instead of our count of order ID and you see we're back to the exact same graph that we had before when we were using the role-playing dimension. So just as a summary here, role-playing dimensions do work, but it's not necessarily ideal because you're gonna have to copy those tables multiple times. It's a much better practice to set up an inactive relationship and then use a little bit of DAX in order to activate that inactive relationship when you need it in the visuals.